Hello everyone out there. Thanks for joining us once again. My name is Dr. Ogenekevo Gidigbe and you're welcome to Lifeline on NTA2. A couple of things have been happening topically in the world of health. Uh, viruses have been rocking boats uh, internationally, even here in Nigeria. But today, we decided to take an issue that is more domestic. I'm talking about fire. Recently, I had cause to go to the trauma and bonds unit uh, here in Bagada, Lagos. And you'll be amazed at the kind of cases I saw. Actually, on the 26th and 27th of December 2015, people were losing their lives as a result of fire from either stoves or what have you. So I decided to take a break from all the viral issues and come back to talk about something that affects us right in the home, affects our health if we uh, do not try to be as careful and safety conscious as we should. Joining me uh, in the studio today is um, someone who, together with a team, has been empowered by the United States Embassy here in Lagos to uh, carry out a lot of health and safety functions. And um, they've been doing uh, a lot uh, as it has to do with um, fire prevention. Indeed, we are talking about fire prevention uh, today. Mr. Moshud Abdul Latif, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Moshud Abdul Latif is a Carrington Youth uh, Fellowship Initiative Fellow. Now, the Carrington Youth Fellowship Initiative, like I said earlier, is an initiative of the United States um, Embassy here in Lagos. Moshud Abdul Latif, fire prevention. Now, your team has been doing a lot when it comes to fire. Let's start with the basics. From your research, how common are fire accidents here in Lagos? Uh, thank you very much, and I'm very happy that we're bringing uh, up this issue because fire has been an issue that people think they don't need to be bothered about. And there are a lot of casualties you see in the hospital when you visit the hospital. Basically, in Lagos, we've had a um, series of fire incidents. Sometimes you have to count a number of fire incidents in a single month. Between, in a month? In a single month, yes. Between 2011 and 2014, we have about 14.8 billion naira worth of property destroyed because of fire accidents. In January 2015 as well, we have um, a, a minimum of 20 fire incidents reported by the Lagos State um, Safety um, Commission and Lagos State Fire Safety. So we've seen that um, there are a lot of issues around fire safety. Are there human casualties yeah, sure. with these fire outbreaks? Yeah, sure. Usually, human um, um, are involved and lives and property are usually damaged as a result of a fire um, accident. Okay, so it is quite common. Yes, indeed it is common. Uh, I visited the trauma of um, bonds unit uh, myself and I was able to um, see what was going on there. You know, fire was causing people to stay in the hospital for six weeks, eight weeks, you know. Some people could not even survive. There was a case of um, uh, a family, uh, a family of four, uh, a man, his wife, and his uh, young children who, uh, as a result of a stove accident, um, were involved in a fire uh, situation. Of course, the man lost his life. Uh, I'm not very sure, but I think uh, the two children lost their life. And then the woman uh, is still trying to recuperate from the severe bonds, third degree bonds, as we call it uh, in the clinics. Um, now, you are a Carrington Youth Fellowship Initiative. Before we look at um, a video clip of how fire can actually uh, affect the family, uh, tell us about your Health and Safety Plus team. Yeah, thank you very much. In this initiative. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the Health and Safety Fellow um, Plus team is uh, an initiative supported by the U.S. Embassy here in Lagos. And basically what um, HS Plus team does is to uh, design projects that can um, influence people's decision, emergency preparedness and um, response during fire, fire accidents. We've noticed that um, there are a lot of casualty figures when it, when it comes to fire accidents. Lives are lost, properties are damaged. Uh, but people don't want to talk about this. People think about um, 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 HIV and talk about... But these are uh, um, um, incidents that can cause destruction to someone's um, uh, family, property, 
and I've, I've, I've even seen cases where someone who had labored for over 20 years lost all his property as a result of fire accident. And majorly all these fire um, incidents are preventable. That people, if people are empowered to be able to um, take decisions when there are incidents, then they could save life and their properties. Well, before we get into the nitty gritty in terms of uh, what are some of the risk factors for how these fires even start, and then before we go to all the preventive work that you've been doing, let's take a, a quick look at a clip, a short clip, uh, just to really appreciate how fire can affect a family. How safe is your family within your home? Have you ever given talk of a fire incident? Okay, stop. Hold that talk. We're not going to burn this house down to show you that. But, did you give a second thought when you overloaded that socket? The laptop on the bed, presently overeaten for lack of ventilation. That candle on the table edge. Have you given a thought to where Junior is? What he's doing with that matchbox you saw with him a few minutes ago? Well, welcome back uh, to the show. You're still tuned into Lifeline on NTA2. And today we are looking at fire prevention. Indeed, fire is a public health hazard. It is not something that we should just overlook because if you happen to visit the trauma and bond center in any uh, city or state that you are, you will appreciate why we must know everything of how to prevent fire. Now, I've been talking to a Carrington Youth Fellow Initiative, uh, Carrington Youth Fellowship Initiative Fellow, uh, which is an initiative of the United States um, Embassy here in Lagos. And uh, he's been telling us a few things on fire prevention. Now, Moshud, straight to the point, looking at that short video clips, we saw that uh, there were electrical fires, there were electrical uh, fire points, you know, where points where uh, fires could emanate from talking about sockets. Uh, they talked about a child playing with fire directly. Now, from your work, what have you found? What are the most frequent sources of fires when it comes to family living? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have noticed that um, a lot of family, um, they don't uh, give regard to um, their safety. People construct their houses in such a way that they seal themselves indoors when there, are, when there is a fire accident. A lot of people don't think they, they need a um, um, fire alarm or they need to have um, um, an exit in terms of a uh, um, fire accident. Also, we've noticed that people don't turn off their electrical appliances when they are going to work. They leave everything on and people don't monitor their cooking in the kitchen and they can eventually burn themselves and uh, destroy their properties. So uh, we've tried to see how we can uh, come to the aid of people. Basically, people need to be aware because information um, is, is key to uh, influencing decisions. So we try to influence people's um, um, behavior through uh, our project. And uh, if, if, if you won't mind, I'll be able, I, I would like to talk a bit about how we've been able to achieve that. Okay, let's, um, let's tell us uh, what have you been able to do in terms of education of people? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we've noticed that uh, people appreciate audiovisuals a lot and they tend to uh, like anything that, that they can relate with in terms of can they really see it. People think um, fire, fire accidents are, are, are basically restricted to certain areas. But we found out that every year can, can catch fire. And so everyone has to be a safety ambassador. So if you are looking at people in the marketplaces like Balogo Market, Ladipo Market, you see a lot of cases of fire that, that, that have been happening there. So people need to be aware that prevention is always the key and mm -hmm. it's better than uh, having to go to, uh, to look for solutions. And if you come to look at um, how people respond to fire accidents, it's pathetic. A lot of people don't even know how to operate the fire extinguisher. There is no educative material out there. So we, th we, we decide to, to uh, create audiovisuals that people can be able to relate with, and as a result, people could, uh, could learn a lot on how they can prevent fire accident, safeguard themselves, their property. So you, you, sorry, you, you create these audiovisuals. We are watching one now that's talking about um, how a woman that was cooking left uh, to go and uh, uh, at, attend to a phone call, yeah. and then 
next thing she sees that her cooking pot is already on, f on fire and if you are not careful uh the whole house can get eloped uh in that uh, incident indeed i know an incident that happened uh, on the 26th of december whilst everyone was just recovering from the christmas celebrations uh this fire started uh late in the night from an electrical uh source you know um so you were talking about um what you have been doing to educate people yes yeah um basically we try to identify uh, high prone areas mm -hmm. places that are likely to have um fire um incidences and we've been able to see that the cases in markets yes it's 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 massive so um in lagos state only virtually um every year you will see you will hear cases and read on newspaper how fire has gobbed up billions of our property in the marketplace so we designed our project to attack all these point areas schools because children also have to uh, have the knowledge of fire safety mm -hmm. they are in their homes and usually they tend to be at the receiving site okay. due to the fact that they, they, they could be um, they could be incapacitated to take actions so our uh, individuals are targeted at schools um, um, hospitals and um, marketplaces, families, because we see that there is an aggregate of, fami of family members in workplaces as well. Okay, during your research, did you pull, get to go to like uh, the trauma and bonds unit in Bagada, or the, did you add patients, fire victims? Uh, did you consider them in your research? Did you go and talk to them to find out why, uh, what uh, were the reasons for the accident, so that you can know how to plug in uh, different areas yeah thank you uh, basically we have um up to four areas that we're trying to intervene in on and the first one is research we know that research is key to solving problem mm -hmm. so we try to speak with patients who are uh, born patients in the hospital and we try to ha ask them that what uh the what can they say about uh, what happened to them what brought in the hospital and we can see that uh, all these people they are helpless they couldn't take decision when there is fire accident. They know the next thing to do. So having known this, so we designed our audiovisuals to attack areas where people can get, uh, can, can get um, information or knowledge that can influence their decisions when there is fire accident. So when, when those people you spoke to attested to the fact that once they noticed that fire outbreak, they were totally confused, isn't it? Yeah. They did not know what to do. Now you were talking about fire alarms in houses and other things and that brings me um, quickly to prevention because prevention is better than cure so tell us of uh, the most important uh, preventive measures that the viewers out there should know about uh, thank you basically everyone should know that uh, he's a safety ambassador and as a result most uh, must be able to, to, to help himself and others around. So don't uh, engage in any action that can lead to fire incidents. Firstly, if you are going out, make sure you switch off all your electrical appliances. Never leave your children uh, to be alone in the kitchen. They don't even have any business in the kitchen in the first place. And if you are cooking, make sure you monitor your cooking and you don't have to um, probably sleep off when you are cooking. And also make sure that your house has an exit. You don't build a house with only one entrance. You make sure that you have an exit in case of fire accident. And muster point is very key as well. Everyone should know that if there is a fire accident, what do we have to do? Everyone has to go out. Everyone has to get um, evacuated. And you don't have to start waiting for someone that I want to pick my child, I want to pick someone. Eventually, the two of you could get burnt. And don't consider property first. Consider your life. When you talk of muster points now, what do you mean? I usually see it in companies. I know what it means, but because of the viewers out there, muster points are not things that you see in domestic environments. You understand? And we have a lot of people watching from their homes right now. So do, if, take for example, uh, I rent a one-bedroom flat in Lagos Island, am I supposed to have a muster point there? Yeah, thank you. Basically, everyone building a house should consider the fact that there can be fire accidents anytime. It's usually unpredictable until it actually happens. So everyone should consider having a muster point. A muster point basically is a place where people can gather when there is fire accident. Okay, so where people can rally together, yes, you, you know, like gather. the safety point, and exactly. then from there they can take decisions. Exactly. Uh, now, we, when there are a lot of fires, people first of all think of water. 
when the outbreak has happened, people think of water. Now, you have said, don't consider your property. Consider yourself first. Yes, that's very important. But once they've run to safety, what should be the next step? So the next step should be that anyone who is uh, empowered to take decision should be able to do that. And the, the, the only thing you can do is to try to, ever, to, to evacuate um, um, the, the, um, the fire and take, uh, probably if you can use the fire extinguisher. Does water worsen the fire like we've just seen from that uh, uh, footage? Yeah, it depends on the class of fire. That visual. It depends on the class of fire that you are attacking. So there are different classes of fire. Exactly. You want to uh, throw more light on that? Yeah, we have class A, class B, class C and class D. Okay. So if you have an, um, an outbreak that involves um, electrical appliances, it has its own fire extinguisher that you have to use. Okay. You don't have to pour water. It has, um, the fire extinguisher is made of powder. So that's what you use to extinguish that kind of fire. Also, the powder extinguisher, like this one on the on the that we are just seeing now, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, and then you were talking that's class A fire, yeah, 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 electrical. Yeah. So we have one that can result that can come as a sort of um, um, fuel. I mean, like your petrol or your kerosene. Mm -hmm. They could they could set your home uh, ablaze. So there is another fire extinguisher that you use to um, um, exterminate the fire in this okay. case. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, still talking about um, when the fire has started already. I know that blankets play an important role. Like, um, um, I know of someone, uh, a very senior relative of mine, who was involved in a fire. But the fire had engulfed the only way he knew to go out. He went out anyway and then sustained... Um, the minor to um, moderate uh, burns. Thank God there was no uh, life, loss of life involved. When you find yourself trapped by a fire, what are people supposed to do? Uh, the first thing you do is to call for help. You call for help. You shout out. Let everyone around hear you that you are trapped in. Then you try to ex es escape by either crawling, and usually that's just the best thing to do. You, you crawl. crawl. Yeah, you crawl on your uh, knees out you crawl on your knees where does the blanket come in yeah use blankets when you can uh, be able to trap out oxygen because oxygen supports um, um combustion okay. so use the blanket to trap out oxygen when there is no here support for the fire it will definitely um um, um, um extinguish it if people use blankets to cover themselves is that any does that yeah. do anything yes it does it's it's very important that you have any something that could uh, engulf you and protect you from the fire well, viewers and friends out there, I've been talking to Moshud Abiola, a sci-fi fellow, uh, and we have been talking about fire prevention. Indeed, if you have not seen someone that has been a victim of fire or uh, been a victim yourself, then you really need to thank the Lord and begin to do everything necessary to make sure that fire does not ever happen anywhere um, near you i'm sure that you've been able to gain one or two things especially for your children your children do not have any business in the kitchen now there are some people who will say uh, that uh, four-year-old child go and put salt inside that food you know go and put pepper inside that food That's very bad. that they are training the child how to begin to cook but other than hot substances that are around there we're also talking about fire isn't it yeah, now let's talk of automobile fire because that's one important aspect again you understand i've seen situations on the highway where individuals are trapped inside a car and burnt to ash what have you found from your research yeah personally um a time when i was going home uh, after work i noticed that there so was the, sorry fire. before before you hold that thought all right uh we are just looking at uh, a visual where you people were showing a demonstration of how someone used a blanket that that's out. white a white blanket yes to put out fire yes. are there scenarios like that yeah definitely there are scenarios like that because this demonstration is just a small fire but we know that in reality the fires do not come like that yes but so what we're trying to educate people about is that it's possible for you to extinguish fire with the use of blanket and okay. you have to be able to position yourself well to, to not be at the place where the fire will eventually catch you, but to, um, to rally around it, 
systematically. You look like where the wind. Yes, you you focus on the pathway of the wind. Okay. So you go to the reverse direction mm -hmm. and you apply. If the wind is blowing like this, you, you go, go to, to the, the back direction, yeah. so that you don't come here and the wind burns you the, off. Yes. Anyway, so you were telling us about your research when you had to do with automobile fire because that's something that can that people get involved as well. Yes. Uh, so then I noticed that uh, there was a fire outbreak and it involved uh, like a vanagon, one of those vehicles that are used um, to, uh, to engage in public transport. Mm -hmm. So I could see everyone there were just taking pictures, they were airplanes, they were the next thing to do. So in cases like that... People had escaped? I, I wouldn't know if anyone is trapped in, okay. but in cases like that, the first thing to do is to try to break the, um, the glasses of the vehicle and try to see if there's anyone left in that you can evacuate. Okay. Having done that, you have to immediately inform the, uh, the fire safety. Immediately, I called the fire safety and I informed them of the incidents and I could see that they came around to, uh, to, um, to come to the aid of the people. Though the vehicle was totally burnt, no life was lost as far as um, um, I was informed. As your concern. Yes. Uh, well, uh, you talk, just talked about calling the fire safety. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't think we give our director of programs or the producers fire safety numbers here in Lagos that they should be able to call out. Do you have anyone by chance? Yeah, um, the popular one is for you to call the 112. Okay. It's an emergency number. If you call the 112, they will direct you to, um, they will ask questions, basic questions. 112. Yes, 112. Is the, 112 the number to call. Is That's the general call. emergency number exactly. here in Lagos State, isn't it? No, not only Lagos, everywhere, everywhere in Nigeria. Oh, okay, okay. So if you call them, they will redirect you to where uh, you get help. So they directed me to Lagos State Fire Safety, where they called back to verify um, the details of the incidents. And immediately I could see them responding by bringing their um, trucks to come to the aid of the victims. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, even uh, the situation we had uh, uh, on the 26th of December, they were very prompt as well. After the numbers were called, the trucks were able to come in. Uh, viewers and friends out there, uh, I hope you've learned a thing or two. If not, whenever you see an emergency situation, especially as it has to do with fire or any other situation as, as the case may be, you just dial one one. Two, if it is fire, they would ask you questions and you tell them that, oh, there's a fire incident. They will redirect you to the fire uh, operatives, not just here in Lagos State, but in whatever state you are. Now, people are usually uh, so quick to say, oh, in Nigeria, do things work? Yes, things still work. And we know that I've been, uh, I have a testimony of how the fire people were able to come to the rescue of uh, victims. Uh, Moshud Abdulatif, I want to thank you so much uh, for making our time, even at the very short notice, to come and join us here uh, on Lifeline from the Lagos Network Center of NTA. Uh, just a parting word, uh, our time is far spent. What do you have to say in a few seconds to the viewers out there? Yeah, viewers, I basically um, um, I want you to, to take yourself as a safety ambassador. So you have to be, con uh, to be concerned about your health, the health of your children, the safety of your family entirely, and the safety of Nigerian populace from Lagos um, and to an extent to the um, um, external world. Even in West Africa. Even in West Africa. It? And I want, to, uh, I want to recommend that the Lagos State um, um, uh, Market Association, they should look into creating um, um, a fire safety um, um, channel in every market. So every market in Lagos State should have a fire safety uh, channel that looks into fire um, as, uh, fire incidents. outbreaks because we've seen that most cases um, are usually traced back to the market okay okay well, well we'll we'll take this we'll have your complete team on the set once again uh, you understand i'm afraid this is the much we can take for this episode of the program thank you very much girls out there for joining us until same time next week ensure to have a very wonderful time out